couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to a very special guitar lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And even though we're not gonna play even one note in this lesson, it's a very, very important lesson. And it's something that is very important to me to say and convey and um, instill in my students. And these are the five stupidest reasons people quit playing guitar and give up on their guitar hobby. And um, you'll see that I call them stupid reasons because they have to do with misperceptions. They're really stupid reasons in terms of stupidity because they have nothing to do with reality. And um, I apologize in advance if I come off as condescending. Um, all I want is to keep you playing guitar and to keep you from quitting because I've seen these five reasons uh, attack glorious players and really people who could become amazing guitar players and it just hurts me to see people quit when they really shouldn't. And before we even get into the reasons, I want to tell you the two basic principles that actually cause these reasons. One principle is, um, is insecurity. And I don't know if you know this, but most musicians uh, become musicians out of insecurity. They, they have some sort of insecurity in their life and, and the musical instrument gives them something they can be very confident about. But insecurity is very hard to defeat, and sometimes the insecurity wins. And the second reason is patience and unrealistic expectations. So the first stupid reason that causes people to quit is um, inventions. Really, imagining things uh, like I have small fingers, I have no sense of rhythm, I have no coordination. First of all, rhythm is the single most hardest thing to acquire. Rhythm is not something that's natural to the human body, okay? Keeping time with a metronome is not something that comes easy for anybody. Even if you're born with perfect pitch or to musical parents, still, rhythm is something that's difficult to acquire and people seem to underestimate how difficult rhythm really is and they, is, and they, um, and they think that if they lack rhythm when they start out, then they're hopeless and there's no reason to continue. I've seen that time and time again. And about the small finger thing, I don't have particularly long uh, fingers or large hands, and yet if you can take your pinky and cover the whole set of strings, you're fine. And I've seen children, I, I've had one seven-year-old student about 12 years ago who could solo like crazy almost like Jimi Hendrix, and I'm not exaggerating here. Um, if Jimi Hendrix was an, a seven-year-old kid, that's how he would have played. And that kid quit um, because of a different reason, which is parental pressure, but we'll get to that. So if you think you lack coordination, nobody has coordination at the beginning. Uh, drummers aren't born with the ability to, uh, you know, to do this and to count differently with each limb and they have to study it. And it's the same thing for guitar. You have to learn to coordinate your fingers. So just be patient and remember that it's a hobby. Okay, that's another very, very important principle. Remember that it's a hobby. Remember that there's no pressure. You're just putting pressure on yourself without reason. So that's the first stupid reason people quit. They think they have some sort of inadequacy and those inadequacies we all have them and we all train and practice a long time before we become uh, adequate uh, with rhythm and with coordination and with uh, covering the, the, the fretboard and even with barred chords, which hurts sometimes. And some people think that if it hurts, it means that they should stop playing. It's just uncomfortable at the beginning. So have patience and remember that it's just a hobby. 
Second reason, unrealistic expectations. People off the bat, right off the bat, they start playing and they compare themselves to, well, in the, in the least worst case, they compare themselves to their friends who play guitar and to their family members who play guitar. Um, I've heard countless times, I have this friend who plays amazingly and I have this cousin who plays amazingly and I have this uncle or aunt or grandmother who plays tremendously well. And they compare themselves to those people. And the worst case scenario, and this happens more often than you think, people compare themselves to their idols. They compare themselves to Eric Clapton. They compare themselves to Slash. They compare themselves to Steve Vai or to uh, Satriani or even to Greg Howe. I used to compare myself to Greg Howe, but I was realistic about it and said, there's no way I'm ever going to play like that. Um, so I decided to just be inspired by Greg Howe and Steve Morse and the likes. And that made me a better guitar player. But most people immediately think that if they can't imitate or emulate their idols or other icons of guitar, then they shouldn't play. And it might sound stupid, and it really is stupid if you think about it, when you think about it for other people, but you might be doing that yourself. And um, let me give you an example. If you see, um, if you see Steve Vai or Joe Satriani play really, really fast licks, and then you try to imitate that and you can't do it, then you might get frustrated because that's above your current level. But it doesn't mean that you won't get there. Um, when I started playing fingerstyle, I had no idea how Tommy Emmanuel does what he does and how classical players do what they do. There's a very thin line between classical and fingerstyle. And I didn't understand all those chord shapes, but in time, I started understanding it. And it happened to me very, very late. I, I played for, for, I think, 15 or 17 years before I actually started getting the theory right. Even things that people tried teaching me before, you know, uh, when I was a beginning player. Um, theory takes time to sink in, and really difficult technical stuff takes time to sink in, and everybody has different um, time zones, time lapses, uh, until they actually get something. You can't force the muscles to learn something. You can just practice and hope for the best, and one day you'll wake up and do it. So stop comparing yourselves to either your friends or your family members or to your idols or just to really great guitar players uh, and just compare yourself to yourself and just measure your progress week by week, day by day, practice session by practice session and just give yourself time and one day you'll wake up and you'll be amazing and you'll understand things that you never thought you could understand or play. Okay, I'm a living example for that. I never thought that I could uh, understand deep theory and now I do and it's amazing. I go back to things that I couldn't play before just five years ago or two years ago even and suddenly I play them and suddenly I transcribe them almost effortlessly and that's because I do the work and I practice all the time and I try to learn and I ask questions. I, uh, I ask my friends, my musician friends questions and I just try to learn every day something small, just a small bit of information about theory and technique. And that gradually um, betters my playing. So I've learned early on not to compare myself to other players because all that does is frustrate you and makes you want to throw the guitar across the room. I actually did that once to my... Um, <laughs> Well, I was lucky, let's say. The guitar didn't break. It wasn't this guitar, but it was a different guitar. Um, I'm digressing. So, third reason, parental pressure. That applies to kids most of the time. And that's the most infuriating thing for me as a teacher. When I, uh, when I see a parent putting so much pressure, unnecessary pressure on their kid. And it's not necessarily awful parents. It's, it's really good people, really nice people, very warm people, but they still, they have this, um, this misconception about learning music. Um, people for some reason think that if you don't practice eight hours a day, then you won't get anywhere. 
and it's simply not true. You can practice for 10 minutes a day and it would still be better uh, than not practicing at all, which is m what most people do. Most people think that they, um, they should cancel the next lesson if they haven't touched their instrument. And that's the worst mistake of all because then they won't touch the instrument for another week. So it's better to not practice for a week and have another lesson than to postpone the lesson for another week and then not touch your instrument for two weeks because then you're in the danger zone of thinking that you shouldn't be playing. And as I said, that's wrong because it's a hobby. Why give up a hobby that you like? Um, again, unnecessary pressure. And back to parents. Parents tend to, uh, first of all, ask their kid to play for them. And it's really, really hard to play for other people. It's hard enough to sit there in your own room and practice. And it's, it's almost impossible for somebody, especially a child, to play for their parents. Some children like to play for their parents. I've had students who enjoy playing for their parents. But most students like to play for themselves. And it's a hobby. The parents forget that it's a hobby. It's not something you should be graded on. It's not th uh, something that, you should, uh, that the teacher should say, Oh, he does this well, but he should practice this more often. No, then the parents would just pressure the kid to practice more and then the kid would lose interest in the instrument because the parents made it less fun or not fun at all. The parents should just, if, if you already hired a guitar teacher to teach your child how to play, leave them alone. Give them breathing space and ask them how they're doing in a month, in two months, in three months, in six months. I've had enough students who struggled, really struggled with chords, with, uh, with theory, with scales, with, with fingerings, with pressing the strings, and mostly with rhythm, of course, that's the hardest thing. And for some reason, again, because the muscle memory and the way your brain processes everything, the, the technical stuff, one day, suddenly, there's a quality leap. There's just a leap in quality, an incredible leap. One day, the student suddenly plays better. One day, they get it. One day, suddenly, they're not struggling anymore and they succeed in playing something uh, that they've been struggling with for months at a time, could be. So parents, usually when they see the, the, the kid struggling with rhythm or with chords or with whatever, they think, oh, he's not, he or she is not practicing enough. And maybe they're not practicing enough, but why pressure them into practicing? They should practice when they want to, when they feel like it, when they want to pick up the instrument and play. It's a hobby after all. That's the key thing to remember. It's a hobby. And once you remember that it's a hobby, all the pressure comes off. But unfortunately, most people don't listen to me when I say that and quit anyway. And this is why I'm making this video because if this video helps one person unquit or undecide to quit, then I've done my job by filming this lesson. Okay, so we've had three reasons. Now, the fourth reason, I kind of blacked out here. Oh, right, the, the fourth reason is um, having too much criticism from your teacher. If your teacher criticizes your playing too much, and if the negative things that your teacher says about your playing um, outperform the, the positive things, if your teacher is negative about your progress, you have to change a teacher. You must change a teacher. A teacher should first and foremost commend you on the good things and tell you what you're doing right, and then move on to, to correct what you're doing wrong. And I say wrong because you might be playing okay, but the teacher thinks that you should be playing exactly like they play. And, and in most cases, they're not playing too well. Um, so you shouldn't imitate your teacher all the way. You should take as many influences as you possibly can to become a good musician. And don't just, uh, you shouldn't just sit there and do only what your teacher tells you. You should explore the instrument on your own and try to improvise and try to play stuff uh, off of the internet, um, especially 
if your teacher is a negative person. And I've had a couple of teachers which were negative people. And most of the time that negativity comes because, um, because well, it's not nice to say that, but they've had big dreams about their musical careers and they ended up as teachers and they're not very satisfied with being guitar teachers, so they take it out on their students. There are a lot of teachers like that. So you need to find a teacher who's positive and who likes to teach and who knows how to teach. That's the most important thing. Change a teacher right away if they don't answer that criteria. Now for the final reason, insecurity itself. Insecurity can skewer your view um, regarding your own playing. And this unfortunately happens uh, more with female guitar students than with male guitar students. And usually the female guitar students, uh, from my experience um, over, uh, of over 14 years as a guitar teacher, uh, actually over 15 years now, um, um, blackout again, ADHD, sorry. Um, female guitar students usually progress faster and better than the male students. And yet, most of them don't see it. Most of them think that they're making mistakes that they're really not making. They think that they have, uh, again, a lack of rhythm or that they're not holding the guitar correctly or, or that there's anything wrong with their playing, with their technique. When most of the time, they're way ahead of the male students and they play amazingly beautiful and they have great sensitivity and great ears and really, they really get into it and they get it, even the technical stuff. And yet, they refuse to believe it when I tell them and they think that I'm just telling them because they're paying me and I'm their teacher. And unfortunately, most of them quit eventually because no matter how good they play, they think that they're awful guitar players and they're too shy uh, to play for their parents and then the parents, of course, pressure them to play or say then you shouldn't play at all or they play with friends and because they're insecure, not just female students, male students, I'm talking generally and back to the general population now, um, they play with friends and sometimes they're better than their friends, but because their friends have been playing for a, long, a longer period of time, they think that they're not as good as their friends. Even if they're better than their friends, they won't see it, they won't hear it. They're, they'll criticize themselves, they'll become frustrated and they'll quit. And that's a shame, that's a shame. I've seen too many good guitar players and really, really awesome musicians to be. Um, just forgo the instrument and quit for these five stupid reasons and they're very very stupid reasons in my opinion because they have nothing to do with real life they have nothing to do with how you actually play and how you're, you actually progress as a guitar student so the takeaway is this cut yourself some slack okay it's a hobby two it's a hobby Three, it's a hobby, right? Everyone has their own rhythm. Everyone has their own pace. Everyone uh, is good at one thing and bad at another thing. For example, some people are better with chords and scales. Some people are better with rhythm, but they can't hold a chord down. Some people have really, really good sense of rhythm and structure musically, but they, they just don't understand the, the theory or they, they struggle with memorizing scales and chord positions. And it balances out, trust me, it balances out. Just keep going, just persevere and just, you know, have another practice session. Just sit and if you don't wanna practice, just take the guitar and start noodling around. Doesn't matter what you do, just keep playing and keep enjoying the instrument. Just have fun, okay? Stop pressuring yourself. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.